Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're back and we got a lot done on our 47 amp, which we're going to cover in this episode. And for the wiring part of this, I wasn't doing it as step-by-step -step as I did the fabrication part because they feel like the fab work is kind of unique to each build, but the wiring is pretty common across all the different amplifiers. And I've shown my wiring techniques and stuff on other builds, and so I kind of just went over the high points of the wiring that we're doing in this specific amp. I did get our silver speaker jacks, which I think look a lot better than the gold ones do, and they're gonna match the theme in this. And so, Let's jump right in and start working on the wiring and getting this thing ready to power up. Okay, so most of the parts have come in and we're going to get back to work on this little guy. One of the things that I need to deal with on this amp that I haven't in previous ones, I'm going to be mounting the cathode resistors for the output tubes underneath the top plate of the amplifier. In my other bills, I've mounted them up on top of the top plate, which some people seems to be a little controversial, but I wanted to keep the heat out from the inside of the chassis. And so on this one, I'm going to need to vent that heat out through the top of the chassis. So the first step in that direction, I found these little screens that snap into a one inch hole and I'm going to be mounting a couple of these this one's going to be over where the dropping resistors for the heaters for the input tubes to drop it from 6.3 to 5 volts as I'm wiring the two two and a half volt filaments in series and I'm sure those guys will be putting off a little heat and then over here, this will be for venting the heat from the cathode resistors. And I don't think the cathode resistors from these input tubes are really going to be making a lot of heat. And then we also have these 10 turn hum pots that I want a, a real fine graduation of the knob turns to how much it's moving the wiper. And so. We're going to be mounting these two guys right here, and I'm going to measure and make sure that all of these devices are going to be in a straight line across here behind these tubes. And then this is kind of, you know, visually evenly spaced over here, and it lines up with the, the screw here and the screw there. And these pots are going to line up with these screws, and then this will be right in the center between the output transformer so get a nice some symmetry going there so gonna get that stuff mounted here and get those holes drilled and I did go ahead and drill the holes over here on the side where we're gonna have power switch is gonna go back here in this corner and then we're gonna have these two filament transformers for the output tubes stacked up here along the side and there will be a second choke mounted up here on the side, but I'm not going to drill the holes for that yet because I've got two different size chokes that I'm going to be experimenting with to get the voltage where I want to see it. So, actually, this is a choke, not a filament transformer there. And we're either going to be using this choke or this choke and haven't decided yet which one of these we're going to be using and obviously they're different sizes would need different holes drilled so we're not going to be drilling any holes until we do a little testing and see which one of these we're going to be using I'm pretty sure we're going to be using this larger one but we'll see when we get in there and get this thing powered up and see what kind of voltages we're getting so I'm going to go ahead and mount these two filament transformers and then get the holes drilled for these screens and these hum pots for the 
and the top plate and get ready to bolt all that stuff down and then we'll come back and I'll show you wiring up the switches in these filament transformers and how we're going to do all that. So we'll be back in a little bit. Okay, we came in here and we punched the holes here for our little vents and they look like this and they just have a little screen on them and they're kind of a really light gold, more of a silver color and they just pop in from the top and I may trim off a little bit of these little legs they're a little long to make sure we don't get into any kind of electrical shorts obviously that would be a bad deal but anyway i think those are going to look really nice in this back corner here our power switch is going to sit right back here and these wires come around and one of them goes to the iec connector one of them goes to these transformer leads and then here are the filament transformers and what I did is I wired the power wires from the 120 volts so they're in parallel so we only have two wires coming over here to the switch I just thought it looked a lot cleaner like that and these are going to sit right up in here and the secondary wires are going to come up here to this tag strip and then we're going to pull our heater voltages off that. And we'll be overlapping these two tabs so the bolt holes share one bolt that holds both transformers down in the center. So anyway, I think that's going to look really clean. I'm going to go ahead and get these bolted down. I'm going to get these soldered up to this tag strip. I'm going to solder these power wires and these power wires up to the switch and wire up the IEC socket and get everything ready to power up the transformers and then I'll probably pull it up on a variac and just make sure that we've got voltage to all of our different tag strips and to our tube sockets and stuff before we put the rectifier tube in and I'd still need to wire up this part over here too which is the filtering caps and I'm probably going to go ahead and wire this stuff up too. It's not rocket science. Again, I'll show you the schematic here. What that looks like. Fairly simple two choke, two rectified power supply. We've done a bunch of these. And so shouldn't be real difficult to follow along with that. Get rid of these little spare wires. The other thing I want to show you is the... Here are the, the two hump pots. There's one down here and there's one here. And these are where we're going to pull the voltage off of the direct heated cathode for the cathode resistor and bypass cap, which are going to be mounted in this area right here and what I'm probably gonna do next is work on getting all the heaters powered up and make sure we get all of our AC voltages that are going to the high current parts which are the heaters so that we can get a good idea of what our B plus is going to be and so let me get some of this wiring done and Again, like I'm doing on this build, I'm doing some of this wiring off camera and then coming back and showing you what I've done. So I can kind of zip along on this a little easier. So we'll be back in a little bit and I'll show you what I've done as far as this power supply wiring. Okay, so I've jumped ahead a little bit here. We got our two filament transformers right here. And the secondary of these have been pulled up to these pins on this tag strip right here then one pair of the heater wires come over here to this 47 tube and then the other one comes down here to this 47 tube we also brought the 6.3 volt winding off of the main power transformer to these terminals right here and then let me zoom in here 
you can see got a jumper that goes from here over to this terminal we have the resistor going across here this is a 0.75 ohm and I've got it where it's sitting directly over the top of this ventilation hole where the little screen's going to go so the heat from this resistor will go right out through the top what I may do is use two resistors that are half this value across both of these and put one on each side of the 6.3 volts to drop it down to 5 volts but given that this is an indirectly heated tube I think just putting the resistor on one side will be fine and then you can see these come up here and then the yellow wire goes to this terminal here then the blue wire goes from this terminal across and over to this heater and then this green one comes back and goes back over here so we have the heaters for these two input tubes put in series so that we have 2.5 volts on each one which added together is 5 volts which should be what we see here but we'll find out when we power this thing up which we're not far from doing to at least check out how the heaters are going to work we've also got the ground wire for this cap run over to here then we have the wire to the choke that's on the top side hooked up to this other terminal goes up to the choke comes back over to this pin which then goes through this cap then we're going to connect this terminal to one side of the second choke over to here and this is where our B plus is going to be and that second choke is going to sit up here in this corner and again I'm not sure which of the two chokes I'm going to use so we're going to test that out get our B plus where we want it to be once we get all the amperage for the tubes running through the transformer and determine which of the two chokes we're going to use to get the right voltage drop so the next thing I needed to do was the cathode resistors and so I made this really cool piece of aluminum angle iron which I painted black so it'll match the inside of the amp we've got threaded holes here which the screws that hold down the output transformers will hold this plate right here so we're going to be you can see the holes here in the top of the chassis and let me let me go ahead and get these wires out of our way so I can show you how this is going to work so this is going to sit right here and the screws that hold down the output transformer will thread into here then in the the face of it I've drilled two four holes that are threaded and that's where our cathode resistors are going to sit like this with the center point is where the ground's going to be then on the back side of this I'm going to mount this five terminal tag strip which I may probably mount it like this and I'm going to use an insulating washer here in the center so that it's not grounded and then this is going to be our ground point but we're going to run a ground lead haven't decided exactly the direction but it's basically going to come across and over somehow over to here to our star ground point so this is going to be our main ground point for the output tubes and then this will be the cathode from the tube will connect to here and then we'll have the resistor the wire to the resistor coming around to the front side then the ground will come up and over to this pin and then we'll have the capacitor across this this pin here is going to be where our B plus comes and then we can hook this wire that goes the output transformer to there and then loop a wire across these two outside terminals and then 
this wire can connect to this side. So that'll be all nice and neat. It'll all be on this little piece of aluminum angle iron. It'll act like a nice heat sink. And then, of course, we've got this big hole here in the top of the chassis where I have a little screen where the heat from those resistors can go out through the top of the amp so it doesn't get trapped up inside here. The next thing we need to do is I've made up these little jumper wires that are going to go across here and there to connect to each side of this potentiometer. And then the center of this is going to come over here to the cathode resistor on each side. And this hump pot will be the center of the heater windings, which is where we're pulling off the cathode signal that over to the resistor. So I need to get all that wired up, get the all these little jumper wires put in place, and then I'm going to have to run the plate wire from here up and over to the plate. I can't remember which one of these is. We'll figure that out when I get ready to do that. And then the screen's going to come up and over and connect to here for the UL tap off the transformer. And so I want to get all that wired up before I power up the amp and then make sure that we've got some DC here across this rectifier tube. Then I'm going to have to run a wire from here over to this cap. See what our B plus is on this first cap. Experiment with the two chokes to see how much voltage drop we need to get to here. And then this is going to run up and over and down to the B plus on this tag strip that's going to be over here like that. It's going to come, B plus is going to come up over and then connect to this terminal which is then going to go to the two output transformers. So I think this is going to be a really neat layout and this will be the first time that I've put the cathode resistors inside the amplifier. I know like probably every other amplifier except the ones I've built have them inside. So this will be the first time I'm doing that and I want to make sure that I designed it in such a way that the heat doesn't get trapped underneath here and cook the capacitors. So once I get all this wired up, my goal is to first fire up the heaters on all the tubes, make sure all the heaters are working. Then we're going to connect up the B plus, have the cathodes able to be grounded through their resistors, hook up the plate voltage to the tubes, and then power up the amp, and each time I'm going to be using a variac and slowly pulling up the voltage to make sure we're staying within, you know, the safe voltages that these tubes can handle. And hopefully, we'll have the right plate voltage and the right cathode voltage and end up with the right voltage on this heater at full wall voltage. But we won't know that until we test this thing out. So I'm going to go ahead and get back to wiring up this last little part on this cool little heat sink I made and get the grounds run and all this other stuff that I just went over and get ready to power up this amp for the first time. So I'm going to go back off camera, work on this stuff some more, and I'll show you this final wiring stuff here and that'll probably wrap up this video. So be back in a little bit. Okay, so we've got our little set up here for our cathode resistors all installed and here are our two cathode resistors for the output tubes this blue wire here comes around and goes to this pin right here this one comes around goes to this pin or terminal right here and these are the two cathode bypass capacitors with the negatives joined up here to the center terminal, which then has this nice fat copper wire that comes over here to our star ground point over here where the first capacitor of the power supply is grounded. This is also insulated from this aluminum with some shouldered plastic washers. 
so that this is not grounded anywhere except through this copper wire that goes over here. In the past, I've grounded these to the chassis, but this time, since we're doing this higher end kind of build, I decided to insulate this terminal so that we only have one star ground point. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna insulate any grounds we create over here from the chassis so that everything's grounded through this one point. So we have the two wires coming off the heaters to this hum pot here and here. And then the center tap or the wiper of the hum pot comes over here to the cathode resistor to connect the signal ground from the power tube right here. And then here we have the hot lead or the B plus wire from the output transformer coming to this terminal here and this terminal here. There's a jumper underneath this terminal strip that goes from this terminal to this terminal. And then we have our B plus wire. I went ahead and used this overkill. This is just a piece of solid core copper out of some Romex house wiring that I used for this negative and positive. And I decided to just go ahead and put some monster stuff in here while we're doing this. So these two come over here. And again, this is our star ground point. This is where our B plus is gonna come up. So now that we've got all of our heater wiring done to all the tubes, all I've really got left to do at this point, I need to hook up the plate and the ultralinear taps from the output transformers to the plate and the screen on the output tubes. And then I need to connect the grid leak resistor to ground. I may temporarily just run one over to this ground point so that I can power up the output tubes, get the current running through them, get the current running through all the heaters, and we're real close to powering this thing up. And so the next step is going to be probably going to test all the heaters out. And I may start doing the voltage test in this next kind of set of wiring in the next video, because I think we've got a lot done in this episode. So we'll be back soon to finish up some of this power supply wiring, which is basically hooking up the choke over here. But I think we're about ready to power this thing up and at least check all the heater voltages and stuff and start seeing what we need to do to dial those in. Then we can power up the output tubes and see which one of these chokes over here we're gonna be using and then get it mounted and get it permanently wired up. And then once we get the heater voltages stabilize where we want them and we get the B plus finalized go into the power tube and have it connected and conducting then it's a simple matter of connecting up the input tubes hooking up the voltage to them and bringing the volume control and the RCA jacks and bringing the signal into the input tubes and then connecting them to the output tubes with the coupling cap so anyway Hope you're enjoying this so far, and let's wrap this up right here. Well, as you can see, we're getting pretty close to powering this thing up, and I'm really excited to see what these 47 tubes look like when they're running current through them. I've heard they look really cool and got kind of a, um, a real blue glow thing going on, but we'll see here shortly. I am going to try to get some of this last little bit wired up, like I said in the video. One thing I want to cover too, and somebody made a good point, I'm using hum pots in this amp. And they made the point that I could put the cathode resistor and bypass cap on the center tap of the filament transformers, especially since we're using two separate ones. And absolutely we could do that. But one of my concerns was that as you can see over on this side of the amp, there's a lot of AC going on over here. And I was concerned about where I was gonna put the cathode resistors over here and not get it swamped by all the AC that's going on over here. And it kind of defeats my goal of building my amps where 
we got kind of a line here where the AC's over here and then the signal's all over here. And I suppose I could have run the center tap across and over here to this board, but then if I have AC noise, I've got no way to try to tune it out. So I felt like using these hum pots and pulling the cathode signal off them instead of trying to pull them off the center tap of the transformer made more sense on this build. Something you might want to experiment is trying that and see if it does work. So I know amps have done that in the past and I know with two and a half volts we shouldn't have the problem that you have on a five volt with AC hum like a 300B amp. So anyway I think we got a lot done. We're really heading in a good direction. I know I've been slow on this project, but I've really been trying to do a thoughtful job of how I'm laying everything out and to do things really clean and neat. And I'm really proud of this little piece of angled aluminum heat sink thing that I made up for the cathode resistors, which again, there's no bolts on the top side. The next challenge I'm going to have is trying to do some blind holes for the tag strip that's going to go across here for the input tubes, but wish me luck on that. I think I'm going to be able to do it. This is pretty thick material. The little screens I found for the ventilation I think are going to really look nice and give a vintage feel to this. And I also think the silver shafts for the hump pots are going to look really nice and have this whole silver vibe. And so I've got silver RCA terminals. I got a silver volume knob. I got a silver Skunky Design logo. And so I think all of that's going to really look great. Dolly's over here pestering me saying it's time for dinner. Get off the camera, girl. So I'm logging out here. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Please like the video. And we'll see you real soon as we get back to more 47 globe tube amp fun. Have a great day.